so yeah, my name is Eduardo. I'm a PhD student at Imperial College London. I work on dynamic optimization. And today I wanna show you this package that I've been working on. Um, I call it Interesso, so it's Integrated Residual Solver. Uh, a lot of this might be unfamiliar to a lot of people. Uh, I just wanna say, if you're familiar with optimal control or trajectory optimization, these are all the same things. They have the same mathematical formulation. So at the end of the day, we're trying to satisfy some dynamics and perhaps we want to minimize or maximize some kind of merit uh, subject to these dynamics and other constraints. Um, just to a bit of a spoiler alert, the results I'll be showing is that uh, if you're trying to solve some problems like this Goddard rocket problem where you're trying to see how, how high a rocket can go with a certain fuel um, and you use a state of the art method like a pseudo spectral direct method like collocation, it actually fails for a segment of the trajectory. Um, and this is a, a property of this problem and many others. Whereas if you use an integrated residual method, it doesn't fail and it gives you something that more closely resembles the analytical solution. So this is the problem formulation here. So if you want to do dynamic optimization, you have a certain cost, but you can also just do the dynamic feasibility if you just want to see if something is feasible. So in the case of feasibility, you just want to find states and inputs, which are itself trajectories of time. Uh, and then there are the dynamic constraints over there. So this is where you would put your ordinary or differential algebraic equations in the residuals function there. So that function has to be equal to zero for all times in your time domain. Um, additionally, you have further constraints on your states and inputs, x and u. These constraints are actually an infinite number of constraints because you have to enforce these for all times in t. So that's when it gets tricky. You really need to discretize things. Additionally, you also have boundary conditions, so the initial conditions and final conditions on T0 and TF, and this resembles the formulation of the problem that we want to solve. How do we do this discretization? So if you want something that converges quite fast, you should be using some kind of polynomials, uh, unless you have a periodic uh, function in which you should be using sinusoidals. Um, so what we do is we create piecewise polynomial discretization. So for the states and for the inputs, as you can see there for the states X, we've created degree two polynomials in a piecewise fashion. And the values of these points become the decision variables of the optimization problem. Likewise for the inputs there U, uh, they no longer have to be continuous and they are here approximated by uh, first degree piecewise polynomial. In order to do, to satisfy the differential algebraic equations that you might have, you need to integrate these. So we uh, integrate this residual function that we want it to be zero. In this case, unlike collocation, we are oversampling. So we're evaluating at more uh, quadrature points than the decision variables that we have. And this gives us the property of uh, not having those singular arcs. And for this uh, reason, you actually don't get uh, the residual to equal to zero exactly because you have a finite discretization only if your discretization is of uh, infinite number of pieces of infinite degree polynomials you would actually have zeros in the general case so what we're trying to do is minimize this uh, dynamic constraint violation um, the residual squared norm So simply put, for the feasibility example, you actually have an infinite dimensional problem there that has uh, the residuals as the objective function. This is what you want to minimize. And these are in the infinite domain. So you need to discretize it. And this transcription process turns these integrals into summations. Uh, as, you, as you can see there, where you're integrating using uh, quadrature, and we're doing the parameterizations using those piecewise polynomials. So now you have x and u, not the bold ones, become the decision variables, which are the, the parameters of uh, the states and inputs. Uh, it's worth noting also that instead of just having uh, one problem, you actually have a sequence of problems. Ideally, you would want to solve 
uh, coarse discretization and then use the solution of that to uh, interpolate and warm start a problem with a finer discretization. And so you end up with a sequence of optimization problems which are parameterized by a certain mesh, which is how many intervals and how much degree of polynomial you have. What packages have I been using for this Interesso? Uh, I've um, been using MathOpt interface uh, more recently to be able to plug and play different optimization algorithms. Um, this is a very well established package and it allows for um, Interesso to be somewhat future proof as uh, other solvers might come up. And to take care of the automatic differentiation, I'm actually using reverse diff. Um, it allows us to get fast gradients and Jacobians. So to show you how to solve that problem that I first showed the picture of, so here is how you create the states, the differential variables uh, more specifically. So you have your height and your velocity and your mass. These are the states of the rocket. We, different, uh, we parameterize them with the second degree polynomial, so number two there, and then we apply initial conditions. And in the case of the mass, we apply bounds. Uh, otherwise, the bounds are from minus infinity to infinity. And then you have the thrust input u, which is an algebraic variable here uh, with its own uh, initial condition. Uh, and that's how you formulate the problem. Uh, some of the code is hidden, so the dynamic function is there, is hidden, but this is what you provide. Uh, if you are doing a feasibility problem, you don't attach any cost function there, so with the nothing. And so these are the results. So if you look at um, a state-of-the-art solver, for example, the one presented in Betts, the book, um, you see that you actually have a singular arc for some of the problems like this one. Whereas if you take this um, least squares, which is an instance of the integrated residual approach, you end up with something more smooth and it's much more reliable. If you discretize this enough, it would closely resemble the analytical solution that we should have over there. The future work I want to have, so this package is still very much a work in progress. Uh, I've only implemented the dynamic feasibility uh, functionality, so I want to extend this to have cost function uh, associated to it. And the way that uh, the problem is formulated is still uh, very ad hoc to this package, and ideally there would be, just like Jump has done, having this uh, modeling language for mathematical programming, I think there should be one for dynamic optimization, so it would be interesting to have a more standardized uh, modeling language. And yeah, that's all I wanted to present. I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Yeah, thank you. So we can have just one, one question. So what solver was used? So for this, I used IPOpt for this uh, demo, yeah. <laughs> 